Hi everyone, this is Rob from the Mishimoto Engineering Facility. If you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook for more exclusive content. Today we're going to install our all aluminum radiator in your 2015 Plus Mustang GT. Since we're already diving into the cooling system, now would be a great time to install one of our aluminum coolant expansion tanks for a complete cooling package. Let's get started on the install. Tools required for installation are quarter inch drive ratchet and extension, seven and 10 millimeter sockets, a three ace drive ratchet, 10 and 19 millimeter sockets, flathead screwdriver, hose pick, channel lock pliers, needle nose pliers, pop clip pliers, hose clamp tool, and Mishimoto's liquid chill. Installation time is three to four hours. Installation difficulty is a three out of five. Set the vehicle on an automotive lift or raise it with a jack and place it securely on jack stands. Refer to your owner's manual for safe lifting points if you are unsure. Remove the six pop clips that secure the splash panel to the underside of the vehicle. Remove the 16 7 mm screws that secure the splash panel, then slide the splash panel towards the rear of the vehicle to remove it. Locate the radiator drain on the passenger side of the vehicle. You can drain the radiator with a stock drain hose, but we found that it made quite a mess, so we installed a longer hose. Place a drain bucket under the hose and loosen the drain plug until coolant flows freely from the drain. Remove the pressure cap from the expansion tank to accelerate the draining process. Remove the pop clips that secure the air diverter to the radiator support. Then remove the air diverter. Remove the two 10 mm bolts that secure the driver's side radiator stay to the vehicle. Then remove the radiator stay from the vehicle. Remove the two 10 mm bolts that secure the passenger side radiator stay to the vehicle. Then remove the radiator stay from the vehicle. Our vehicle is equipped with a Mishimoto baffled catch can which replaces the passenger side radiator stay, so yours may look a bit different. Compress the spring clamp that secures the expansion hose to the radiator until it locks in the open position and slide it down the hose. Then separate the overflow hose from the radiator. The nipple on this hose is very long, so take your time to avoid damaging it. Remove the two 10 mm bolts that secure the expansion tank to the fan shroud. Disconnect the overflow hose from the nipple on the expansion tank filler neck. Compress the clamp that secures the coolant hose to the bottom of the expansion tank and slide it down the hose. Then separate the coolant hose from the expansion tank. This hose will likely have coolant in it, so be ready with your bucket to capture any spills. Compress the clamp that secures the coolant hose to the rear of the expansion tank and slide it down the hose. Then disconnect the hose from the expansion tank and remove the tank from the vehicle. Compress the clamp that secures the upper radiator hose to the vehicle and move it down the hose. Then disconnect the hose from the radiator. Disconnect the fan wiring harness. Depress the lock tab on the connector, then slide the connector apart. Loosen the worm gear clamp that secures the intake pipe to the airbox and separate the hose from the airbox. Disconnect the two hoses from the intake pipe. To release a hose, depress the lock tab and pull it off. Remove the last hose from the intake pipe by sliding the lock tab down the slot and pulling it off the port. Remove the engine cover by lifting it directly upward. Loosen the worm gear clamps that secure the intake pipe to the throttle body, then remove the intake pipe. Remove the bolt that secures the airbox to the vehicle, located along the driver's side fender. Disconnect the mass airflow sensor and move the harness out of the way. Then remove the airbox from the vehicle by lifting it upward. To release the connector, slide the red lock tab away from the connector, then depress the black tab and pull the connector apart. Remove the bolts that secure the fan shroud assembly to the radiator. Remove the fan shroud assembly by lifting it directly upward. There are two tabs on the radiator that secure the lower half of the fan shroud. Place a drain bucket under the lower radiator hose connection. Compress the clamp that secures the lower radiator hose to the radiator and slide it down the hose. Then disconnect the hose from the radiator. 
Separate the AC condenser from the radiator by lifting it up out of the tabs on the radiator. There are four tabs that secure it. Remove the radiator from the vehicle by lifting it directly upward. Remove the clip nuts from the stock radiator and transfer them to the Mishimoto radiator. To release the clip nut, slip a flathead screwdriver behind the flat side of the clip nut and slide it off. Remove the isolator bushings from the bottom of the stock radiator and reinstall them on the radiator support. Snug the drain plug on the Mishimoto radiator, but do not over tighten it. Install the Mishimoto radiator. Tilt the radiator as you lower it in so the drain will clear the frame rail. Make sure both of the mounting pegs engage the isolator bushings on the radiator support. To avoid possible damage, disconnect the electrical harness from the AC pressure sensor. Attach the AC condenser to the radiator by tilting the radiator back and lowering the legs on the condenser into the brackets on the radiator. Then reconnect the electrical harness to the AC pressure sensor. Install the lower radiator hose to the Mishimoto radiator and secure it with the original spring clamp. Install the fan shroud assembly. Lower the assembly into place, making sure that the tabs on the side of the shroud engage the brackets on the radiator and the tabs on the top of the shroud engage the top edge of the radiator. Then secure the assembly with the original hardware. Reconnect the fan wiring harness. Install the upper radiator hose to the Mishimoto radiator and secure it with the original hardware. Install the driver's side radiator stay and thread in the original hardware, but do not fully tighten it yet. Install the passenger side radiator stay and secure it with the original hardware. Then go back and tighten down the driver's side radiator stay. Install the airbox. Tilt the airbox as you lower it into place to clear the air inlet duct and align the pegs on the airbox with the hole in the fender. Then secure the airbox with the original hardware. Connect the electrical harness to the mass airflow sensor and secure the connector with the red locking tab. Install the intake pipe to the throttle body and the airbox. Connect the three hoses to the intake pipe. Simply push them on until they lock. Then secure the intake pipe with the worm gear clamps. Install the expansion tank. Slip the coolant hose onto the bottom of the expansion tank and secure it with the original spring clamp. Then lower the expansion tank into place, making sure that the tab on the expansion tank engages the slot on the fan shroud. Connect the overflow hose to the nipple on the filler neck of the expansion tank. There is no clamp on this hose. Install the coolant hose to the rear of the expansion tank and secure it with the original spring clamp. Attach the expansion hose to the nipple on the radiator and secure it with the original spring clamp. Secure the expansion tank to the fan shroud with the original hardware. Install the engine cover by pressing it down. Install the air diverter over the radiator and secure it with the pop clips you removed earlier. Install the splash panel. Slip it into place and secure it with the original hardware. There are six pop clips and 16 seven millimeter screws that secure this panel. Clamp off the overflow hose and fill the cooling system with pre-mixed Ford approved coolant through the reservoir filler neck. We used some vice grips to pinch off the overflow hose and installed a spill proof funnel to make the job easy. Start the engine and allow it to idle with the cap off. Turn the heater control valve on the vehicle's HVAC unit to full hot and put the fan on low. Monitor the engine temperature and coolant level in the reservoir. Add coolant as needed to maintain proper level in the reservoir and check your connections for leaks. If the vehicle begins to overheat or coolant starts to overflow from the reservoir, shut off the engine and allow it to cool before continuing. Once the vehicle is fully warmed up and the coolant level has stabilized, allow the vehicle to cool off completely and then top off the coolant. Coolant level should be checked once more after putting in some miles. Now that you have the radiator installed, take a moment to double check your work. Make sure all the hose clamps are tight and the cooling system is properly bled. Check your coolant level after putting in some miles and top it off with Mishimoto's Liquid Chill. Don't forget to click subscribe before you head out.